Hello, welcome to Clarity Design. Today we're going to uh, just have a little look at uh, motion path animation. So uh, we've got a little uh, faux spaceship here uh, that's going to uh, have a little fly around our scene. Um, so we're not going to do anything too complex, just uh, keep it nice and simple. Uh, you're going to need to be in the animation menu set. So make sure you've got animation selected up here and then you can find the animate menu. The first thing you're going to need though is to go to create and we're going to need to make an EP or a CV curve. This is going to be the path that the uh, vehicle or thing is going to fly around. So uh, the EP or CV curve, a control vertex or edit point curve. So um, I'll just pick the uh, control vertex curve. I'm going to go to the top view so that I can uh, accurately position this. I'm going to click and by the time I get to three, that's when the, uh, or four, that's when the first line appears. Um, so just kind of a little fly around and then we'll have it parking up over here. And I press enter to complete that curve. All right, so I've got my curve and I've got my ship and I want to apply the two together. So I'm gonna click on one, press shift um, and click on the other. So I've got them both selected. And this time in animate, I'm gonna go up to animate motion paths and I wanna uh, attach motion path uh, here, so I'm going to go to the options menu. Now inside the options menu, uh, you can work through this in uh, logical order if you want, but um, all of these options are available afterwards um, inside the channel editor. Um, so uh, you don't need to worry about it too much. So trying to work out the front axis and up axis can be a little bit awkward sometimes. Um, uh, and sometimes it's easy just to attach it and play around. So let's just do that, attach. Well, we can see at the moment that over 24 frames, that's 1 to 24. It's going to fly around. Uh, let's just set this up so that it's not playing every frame. It's playing it now at uh, one second of animation. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is turn this spaceship around so it's the right way up. Now I could go back into the options and reapply it and undo and such like, but if I go into the um, attribute editor and inside the attrib attribute editor, I will find the motion path. Inside motion path, you should be able to scroll down until you find front axis and up axis and you can play around with these. Um, so I think uh, that Y will be the front and uh, Z will be the up. Okay, so that's uh, rotated it around for me. Now if I play it through, I should be able to see that whizzes through there. Now what happens if I want to change uh, this end time? Well, if I select that end time, um, I can actually uh, go and find the uh, position marker shape, and you see it says 24 here, and I can change that up. Um, so let's change that to 48, which is just two seconds, gives me a little bit longer to play with. Um, in fact, I'm gonna increase this to 100, and I'm gonna make that 75. So it's uh, for most of the animation bar. Okay, so um, looking at that, we've now got something that travels around really nice and smoothly, and it's following. Now, um, if I wanted to, Let's just go back and select that again and go into the motion path options. I could set it so that um, it doesn't follow um, the path in terms of the direction. Um, so that's that looks like this. Okay, now that is particularly useful if you've got a camera that you're attaching to a path because it means you can point the camera to whatever you want um, and you can get it to move along the path at the same time. So that's uh, one really good reason for that feature. Um, switching follow back on because in this case we do want it to follow around this nice curve. Um, and I can start to edit this line a little bit. So let's move that up off the ground plane. Um, and we will just right click go to control vertex, pick up some of these control vertex, and we can move them around a bit. So just make it a bit more missed that, interesting um, for us as we animate. So there we go, got a nice uh, curve with a dip. Let's just play that through, a little bit more interesting. Um, and at the moment, the uh, vehicle is moving uh, during the same speed all the way along the line. Okay, so it's not accelerating, it's not decelerating, just moving all the way along the line. Inside the channel box, uh, when you made the curve, it will have made an output of uh, motion path. Now, if we're going back into object mode, and I can find that if I select the path or if I select the uh, ship or the object and find motion path one. Now, inside here, this is how I'm going to animate um, the speed and some of the other properties uh, relating to this uh, ship. 
So I can, uh, you can see it's actually got two animation points at the beginning and at the end there. So um, the U value is the total distance traveled along the line. And when it gets to one, that means it's at the end. Uh, and when it's at zero, it's at the beginning. So if I want to make it go a little bit quicker or to speed up at the beginning, if I tell it that by frame 20, I want it to have got further along the line, it's going to travel that part of the line quicker. Um, so if I tell it that by 20, I want it to go less far along the line. So if I reduce the U value, so let's put that down to about 0.05. So it's barely started at all by frame 20. And then right click on the word and key select. Okay, key selected. So that's put a keyframe in. You can see it's on frame 20 at the moment. It's, it's added it in there. And now it's going to start off really slow. And then it's going to start speeding up. Um, so we could go and play around with this in animation curves and we could get really precise and detailed about how this is going to change between the two. Um, so let's say we got up to this stage here and actually I want it to have got there sooner. So I'm going to speed it up now. So I'm going to say but for, by frame 40 I want you to have reached the top of that bump. Um, so let's go and have a look. Where is the top of that bump? That is 662. So let's go back to frame 40. We'll put 662 in here, 662, enter, and then right click, key selected. So I've got another keyframe in, so that's going to speed things up a little bit. So here we go, speed it up and then slow it down to come in again. All right, we're going to leave it at that for now. Um, there is one thing that we can do, which we haven't looked at yet, um, and that is we can change it so that it banks like an airplane. At the moment, it's not banking, it's just staying flat. So let's get that banking a little bit as it comes around the corner. Um, it will either be the front twist or the up twist. So here we go, front twist here. So um, I'm going to leave that on zero to begin with, and I'm going to add the first key framing, key selected, and then I will move it to here, the middle of the curve, and I will increase the front twist. This time I'm going to middle click and drag sideways because I've got it selected already. So I've got that bank happening about as much as I want. And then I'm going to right click, key selected. And then I'm going to move it. I'll wait for it. Actually, I'm going to increase the bank again there. So it's almost halfway around. And right click, key selected. And then I will go all the way to here. And I'm just going to key that as exactly the same, key selected, and then I'm going to flatten it out along here. So let's flatten that out again to flat, and then key selected. Okay, so I've just gone through adding a few keyframes to make the flight path a little bit more interesting. Here we go. Lovely. So it's coming down to land, etc. Brilliant. So um, we've got a really nice uh, piece of animation done in just five minutes. Uh, and ready to roll. So quite a nice uh, piece of animation sorted out. But um, what happens if I want it to start and I don't want it on the line? Well, look what happens if I move this uh, down off the line and I uh, keyframe it, just press S to set that position. It's added, you can see a lot's changed up here, it's gone green, but it's added this uh, blend uh, a motion path uh, blend and that's on zero at the moment if I switch it to one and I switch this to one then uh, it's going to jump back to the line if I switch this to zero it's going to jump off the line okay so I'm going to leave those at zero at the moment um, and let's just I'm just going to keyframe both of them key selected then I'm going to move to maybe frame 20 and by that time, I want it to be totally on the motion path. So we will key that key selected. So between the two, you can see it's going to hover up and start moving forward. And then as it comes to the end, oh, you can see I needed to uh, blend my motion path there as well. So let's go back to frame 20. I needed to keyframe that as well. And key selected. Sorry. So I've got coming up round and then off. So at this point here, we will uh, put this back to. Oh, actually, we'll keyframe this at one. So we'll keyframe these at one. Key selected. And then towards the end, we'll make those 
both zero and key selected. The only thing is though that I need to position this final ship into a position that I would like. So I just need to keyframe that. S. Okay. So there we go. Lovely. Bit of a funny landing procedure, but there we go. So I've blended between motion path animation and uh, landing it down. So you can see lovely little piece of uh, animation set up. And that pretty much takes you through um, everything you need to know about motion paths for now. Uh, enjoy. Yeah.